In this video, we'll take a look at the punctuation mark, which is the comma. Now, there are many different uses of the comma, but we have to make sure that we use it in the right way in order to denote a pause. Now, whenever we read out anything, if we see that we require a pause in the sentence, that's usually where you might consider placing a comma. Let's take a look at an example. If I have the sentence, I went to the shop and saw something. So here, do you think I need a comma after the word shop? Let's read the sentence. I went to the shop and saw something. Did I take a pause? No. Whenever I do not take a pause, then you have to be sure not to unnecessarily place commas. However, had I had a sentence like this, when I went to the shop, I saw something. Read out this sentence again and let's see if we have any pauses. When I went to the shop, I saw something. Did you realize that I took a pause between when I went to the shop and I saw something? Because of this pause, I know that placing a comma between these two parts of the sentence would be appropriate. So usually when you require a pause and a small pause, then we make use of the punctuation mark, the comma. Now let's take a look at the various different ways that we use the comma. Number one, we use it between words which are in a series and which are in the same construction. Let's take a look at an example. Whenever you have a list, for example, I bought apples, oranges, and mangoes. In this sentence, I have three items and I've placed them in a list. Apples, oranges, and mangoes. And in order to separate the items in a list, I have made use of the comma between each item that I have written. Now, take a note of the comma right before the and in the sentence. Whenever you have a list which has only two items, if for example I had the sentence, I bought an apple and an orange. In that case, I will not place a comma before the and. However, if I have more than two items in a list, such as in this example where I have three items, then I will make use of a comma before the last and in the statement. So remember this rule whenever you have lists and then when you need to place the commas. Now let's take a look at the next place where we use commas. When you have a pair of words connected by the word and. So there are certain lists in which Pairs of words are connected by a series of and. So let's take a look at an example to understand this. He bought, let's say, tea and coffee, apples and oranges, right? And maybe say soap and shampoo. So take a look at this sentence. I have three pairs of items here. I have tea and coffee, which are connected by and, apples and oranges, again with an and, and soap and shampoo with another and. So in this example, I have pairs of items listed down in a series, and each is then separated by a comma. So in these examples as well, you will also use a comma to separate the items in the list. Let's take a look at another place where we use the comma. Before coordinating conjunctions linking two independent clauses. We already know what the meaning of an independent clause is. Those are clauses which make complete sense when they stand alone. For example, let's take the sentence, I was tired and I fell asleep. In this statement, I have two independent clauses which have their own subject-verb combinations. I was tired, 
which is one independent clause and I fell asleep which is the other independent clause. I have connected these two independent clauses together with a coordinating conjunction and. When you have two independent clauses combined with a coordinating conjunction, we use a comma before the second independent clause or before the coordinating conjunction. Now, what if I had a slightly different form of this sentence? Had I had the sentence as, since I was tired, I fell asleep. Now, in this statement, I do not have two independent clauses. Instead, I have one independent clause, I fell asleep, just like in the previous sentence. But in this statement, I have a subordinate clause or a dependent clause. Whenever you start a sentence with a dependent clause, then you need a comma after it to separate that in that uh, subordinate clause from the independent clause that comes after. So this is another place where we use the comma. Now, to mark off a noun or a phrase in opposition, we also use a comma. Now, what are nouns or phrases in apposition? They basically add on to a description of the noun or the pronoun or the subject in the sentence. Let's take an example to understand this. The candy store, let's say my favorite store, is closing. So here I have two phrases which are describing the subject. We have the candy store, which is talking about the subject in the sentence, and my favorite store, which is the phrase in apposition, because it is again referring to the subject. So in these cases, we need to separate off the noun or the phrase in apposition using commas both before and after the phrase in apposition. So we have a comma before it and we have a comma after it. Or we can use another example to understand this better. Mark, my teacher is here. Mark is the subject. My teacher is the phrase in apposition. Therefore, I have used the commas before and after it to separate it out from the sentence. Now, let's take a look at another way we use commas to mark off words addressing people. Now, in some sentences, we might need to add the name of a person or a word that addresses a particular person. So, in that sense, we would need to use a comma to separate out that particular word. So, let's take a look at an example. How are you? John. Here you can see before I added the word John, which was the word that was addressing a person, I have added the comma to show that I am addressing a person here. Or imagine the sentence had been, there you are, comma, Mary. So then I would use a comma before the word addressing the person, which would be Mary. Now, we move on to how we use commas before and after words, phrases or clauses added into a sentence. This means whenever you have part of a sentence that you want to squeeze into a sentence. For example, if you have the word, let's take a look at an example. I do not, however, understand you. So here, which part of the sentence has been added into the sentence? The word however. Even if you read it out, you realize that I'm squeezing it in. I do not, however, understand you. I could have said, I do not understand you. It would still make sense. But I have added in the word however. Whenever you insert those extra words, clauses or phrases into a sentence, you also use commas before and after the word, phrase or clause. Now, we also use the comma to introduce a direct quotation. We've already taken a look at questions and how questions are framed. We've looked at how we um, 
introduce direct quotations as well. Let's take a look at another way we use the comma to introduce a direct quotation. Now, a direct quotation basically tells you the exact words spoken by someone. Let's take an example of how we use the comma in these kinds of sentences. Let's say, she said, I see you. So here I know that the part which she has narrated or she has directly spoken are these words, I see you. Now before you show that you are going to write a direct quotation, you need to place a comma. Where do you need to place a comma? Before the quotation mark or the start quotation mark. So you place the comma before it and it should come before you introduce your direct speech over here, which is I see you. Now, there is something really important that you need to remember about using the comma. Never use a comma between two independent clauses because two independent clauses would rather be connected either by a coordinating conjunction such as the fanboys conjunctions that we know for, or, yet, so, but, etc. Or we have to keep them as two separate sentences and separate them with a full stop. Do not use a comma to keep together two independent clauses. An example would be, I was tired, I fell asleep. Now, even though you might find that two independent clauses seem really related and that that could form part of the same sentence, you have to first identify if they are or are not independent clauses. If they are independent clauses, join them up with a coordinating conjunction and do not place a comma if you're simply adding them together or place them as two separate sentences. The kind of error that happens when we join two independent clauses together with a comma, that's called a comma splice. So make sure you avoid that and make use of the comma with all the rules we've just stated.